Friends of God, today I want to talk to you about a wilderness. This wilderness is a wilderness that I experienced in the Spirit with the Lord Jesus and Moses. Okay, um, I don't know if you saw the other video, um, my own personal living like experience of my wildernesses. It's, you know, I don't know, you might want to watch it. it it's interesting and it might be encouraging to you uh, in your walk. But anyway, um, this one is one that I have just gone through in spirit, um, learning in the wilderness uh, with Jesus, which I found out that Jesus was with them in the wilderness. Remember, Father said, I am going to send my angel, the angel of the Lord, with you. Well, that was Jesus. I believe that with all my heart. I mean, I can't, you know, absolutely say, but I can tell you, I believe that because um, I have seen Jesus as the angel of the Lord. And um, when I was in the wilderness, I was taken to the wilderness with Moses. I know uh, if you're just seeing my videos for the first time, um, um, I hate to keep re repeating myself, but just if the first time you've seen it, I have um, uh, been going to heaven and being taught in heaven by Father and by the Lord Jesus, by ministering angels, and also by saints that have gone before us, much like in Revelation 19 and Revelation 22, John, the Apostle John, was shown all the revelations by a brethren, one of the prophets. Okay, you have to go look at that and go read it, okay? Because um, it's scriptural, and I know that there are, you know, um, there's mysticism and all the isms that um, create a lot of bad stuff, and um, I am greatly opposed to that. Um, for me, the difference is, is that spiritism, part of the isms, is they do it. They conjure it, they create it, they um, visualize, they, they do it. I don't do that. I don't. I wait on the Lord. I worship Him with all of my heart, all of my soul, all of my mind, and all my strength. I worship Him, and I wait on Him. And I did not try to make this happen in the beginning. Uh, you don't think you can. Um, maybe if you are in some kind of ism, you could, because it's demons, but demons, I don't think, are going to bring you to the gospel and confirm and teach you the things of God, an open understanding that is totally scriptural. Um, so that's where I stand. Um, you know, if, if, if you don't like it, I'm so sorry, um, but um, this is where I stand. Anyway, um, okay, so I am in the throne room with Father and with Jesus, just sitting there with them, and Moses comes, and he just comes and gets me. He just comes and takes my hand, and when he puts his hand into my hand, it's very comfortable. It's like... Mm, it kind of like goes into his hand like a like a comfortable leather shoe that you've worn all your life, which is true. I have been in the wildernesses, I've been two wildernesses in the natural, in the Lord, and very aware of them. And anyway, now here he comes to get me. Well, I don't want to go. No, I don't. I prefer to be with Jesus and to be with Father. But they tell me, go. I need you to see this. Anyway, so I'm trying to learn to do what I'm told. Anyway, so I go. But I am fighting because I know Moses is taking me to the wilderness because I know Moses is a father of the wilderness. So anyway, he ends up taking me to um, the wilderness. He takes me somewhere else first, but I don't want to go there because I want to stick. Anyway, so he takes me to the wilderness. And um, he tells me first, far, first impression of Moses is, 
If Father tells you, uh, tells you something, believe him. If he tells you to do something, do it. I was like, whoa, okay, how long do I have to walk with you? Um, how long is this going to be, Father? Well, anyway, that was my first impression, but as I began to yield and to go, which took a lot of coaxing with the Lord, Jesus, um, anyway, um, Jesus came and he was right there with us. And so I was walking with Jesus on one hand and Moses on the other hand. And um, sometimes Jesus would not be there. Like Moses took me um, through a field and all of it was basically in different fields in the desert. But anyway, um, the first one that he took me to was I, we were walking and all of a sudden I looked down and there were trillions of scorpions just scorpions everywhere and he asked me he said where do scorpions usually bite you and I was like my feet because you know it's where I'm walking and they're on the ground he was like yes these are the pains that the enemy sends through men to sting you in your walk with the Lord I was like Oh, okay. So we went through the uh, scorpion, the field of scorpions, which was offenses of man. This is a wilderness of teaching. And then all of a sudden, um, you know, this is over a period of like, I would say two months, a month and a half, something like that. Um, we went through another area and suddenly I look and we're walking and there comes a black cloud with like an army of darts an army of darts and they are just coming at us and we're going he's bringing me into the darts and you know what I did I closed my eyes I just closed my eyes and I just was like Lord 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 don't let them get me don't let them get me anyway I made it I made it to the other side I made it through the battle to the other side. When we got to the other side, we turned around like, whew. and as we turned around, that whole horde of darts, they turned around and they started coming back at us. And I went, oh, like that. I just went, oh. and Moses said, see, see your reaction. I was like, oh, goodness be. How do I overcome the darts? the darts the enemy sends through men to wound you okay men men okay then all of a sudden we were walking this is you know nights 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 later but lots of worship lots of waiting but we were walking I found myself walking in an area with the Lord now in Moses and there were tiny whirlwinds whirlwinds just swirling all around with these like the whirlwinds went down very narrow, almost like with a stinger on them. And I was like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And not only were there whirlwind, but as we were walking, there were pits, just one pit after the other. But the problem with the pits is that I couldn't see them. Like you're just walking and I would like want to fall in the pit, but I looked at Jesus and I looked where he was walking and as he walked, it was like crystal glass was under him that as he walked, it covered all the pits. So he wasn't going to fall in the pits. And I was like, well, do I have that? Do I have that pit? Well, these are whirlwind, like offenses and um, things that happen like um, circumstances, circumstances in life where suddenly you find yourself in a whirlwind of, you know, fighting with your husband or, you know, your girlfriends are uh, saying things about you or, you know, strife and contention and whirlwinds and they throw you in a pit. Literally like Joseph, throw you in a pit and you get stuck, right? Okay, so we went through that. 
Then all of a sudden, the last one, finally, um, the last one was a hurricane. Suddenly, and we're walking, and there is a hurricane. And it is hitting me on every side, like, choo, choo, choo. I feel, I mean, I'm experiencing all this, but I don't feel the effects of it. I just know from experiencing it in the natural, what, I'm, what I would be feeling when I'm getting hit on every side in this hurricane, this huge hurricane. And so it went through that. And I realized, wow, I go through this wilderness and most, most all of it, all of it that I experienced was through men. Our brothers, our sisters, our family, our coworkers, our bosses, it's the pains that we endure with man. And he was like, you got to be able to overcome this. You've got to be able to love, not be offended, not, be, not allow them to throw you in a pit, and to hinder your walk with me. And so I was like, oh my goodness. Well, Jesus leaves for a second, and all of a sudden, I find myself in vision with Moses, and it's nightfall in the wilderness, you know, it's his own spirit for teaching in, wilder in the wilderness at night. And he goes, okay, we're going to stop here and we're going to rest for the evening, for the night. And I was like, we are? I don't want to do that. I mean, because I'm feeling all the natural things, even though I'm in the spirit, I'm still feeling all my natural concerns and thoughts and you know it's like what I know and so I'm like I don't I don't want to do that because um how am I going to be protected from whatever is out here in the night and Moses turns to me and uh, well, I get down on the ground like okay well I have to rest here for the night so I get down and I huddle down like this and I think, okay, just get through this night. That's all I can do is just get through this night. And Moses turns to me and he said, oh, are you concerned about the phantom voices of the night? And I was like, what? What? The phantom voices of the night? I was like, I mean, I knew what he was saying, the lies, the threats, the, 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 um, the threats and the, the like, I'm going to do this to you. This is going to happen to you. You know, if you feel this pain, that's because it's this and you're going to die. You're going to, or this is going to happen and you're never going to do phantom voices of the night, right? I mean. I told my friends that and they were like that had to that has to be God because you would never say that my daughter was like mom you would never that's something that would never come out of your mouth I said I know I know but anyway um so I say all that to you because I want to share with you this wilderness this wilderness that we go through with man we have to overcome it. It is the enemy through man to wound us, to put us in whirlwind circumstances, to get us to, to sting us, to hinder our walk, and to put us in ditches so that we, we're stuck. We're stuck from going forward. And it's all lies. And it's all things that the enemy stirs up through man to hurt us. God wants us to do this. Okay, so what happens next? What happens to me? So I find myself standing there and suddenly Jesus comes. He's come. He takes my hand. He brings me further, further way into the depths of the wilderness, of the this desert, the field, okay? The field. And I look, I'm standing there with him and there is 
I mean, it is a trash heap. It's like trash everywhere. Tons and tons of trash, trash, trash. And right beneath us is a big, like a gallon uh, can, canister, that's opened and it's trash. And Jesus looks at it, points to it, and he says, what you think to kick aside as trash is my treasure. There is a treasure in what you think is trash. And I was like, wow, you're right, Lord, you're right. Because sometimes we look at people, I'll just say for me, sometimes I look at people and I think, I don't know if I can deal with that. I think that's just too far gone for me. Like, I know, I know that in reality, no, but my, my natural responses are, hmm, okay, I'm just going to keep walking. I'm just gonna. Jesus was like, no, this field of trash, this desert, you think to kick aside as trash, there's a treasure of mine in there. That was what he taught me in the wilderness. Now I want to say this to you. As I was standing there with Moses, I looked at Moses and I was like, Oh my, Moses. Oh my. It must have been really hard for Moses, if you think about it, because he left Egypt with thousands of people. Only two of the original people that he left Egypt with entered into the Promised Land, and he didn't get to either. Moses, in the natural, on this earth, might have felt at times like a failure, like he failed God. We know he didn't, but I'm just saying, like, think about it from his perspective. Only two, only two of the original that he left Egypt with entered into the promised land, and he was not allowed to because of man, because of man because they tried him and they kept on him doing stuff and because of man. Isn't that something? Anyway, I gotta go. My battery is gonna die for sure. If you've not received the Lord, say this prayer, this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you came to this earth and died for my sins. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. Create in me a new man. Create in me an upright new spirit within me, Lord Jesus. And take me into the promised land. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.